good. Let's go ahead and mute things. Send out things. Connect things. And we should be good. Almost. Wait, hold on. One more. Okay. <laughs> now we're good. So, hello everyone, this is Chris Ingerson, and it is February 1st. And this is the February 1st TechQuest Dev Stream. So, today uh, we're going to be putting the finishing touches on the Plains to Woods cutscene. Or, not cutscene, transition. Um, <clears throat> pretty much all it's really going to entail is... It's going to be really less about the, the uh, Plains to Woods minigame itself and more about the general adjustments that we need to make for transitions. Um, we need to do things like fade out audio um, so that, you know, as the screen is fading to black, the audio around you should fade out as well. Um, we need to set up the... Um, we need to set up the actual transition mini games to have their own sound listeners. That way um, we don't get the really, really distant thud, 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 or whatever sound effect that a uh, transition mini game is going to have. Um, and that's pretty much the major thing that we need to do. There's also some subtle things with um, fading back in from black. We need to make sure that um, the mini game properly fades out first, um, and then we get the fade in. Um, because the way it currently works is those two fades happen simultaneously, and that's a little weird. I'd like it to have a little bit better, um, a little bit better of an actual ending to the mini game to let you know that it's done. Then it'll um, then it'll actually fade in. Um, so just just really some small adjustments today. And uh, we'll see how long that takes us, because I get the feeling that's actually going to take... It's either going to take a lot less time than I'm expecting, or a lot more time than I'm expecting. So I think that's probably going to be the main focus. Um, and if we do manage to get through that, then we will decide what we're going to do next. Um, okay, so give you a sense of where we are currently. There is... We're, we're pretty much done with this uh, Plains 2 Woods minigame. Um, we have the player character able to move around in the minigame, you can get hit by objects, you can trigger all the stuff. Um, you can see here, so we can move around and get hit. And if you listen, you hear very softly, thud. Um, and that's because we're using the player's audio listener, which is really far away from the UI. Um, but we don't want that. Instead, we want it to be probably just localized to this minigame. In any case, so we're about to see the fade in. And you can see that we had a little bit of a... Um, the the player's represent player character, I guess, would be what that is. Um, started walking forward, and it, he'll follow along the path, um, depending on if you're on the far left, far right, or in the center. Um, he's not quite doing what I would expect. Uh, you notice he only made it about halfway before he just before the fade out finished. I'm not entirely sure if that's because the fade out is happening prematurely, um, which is my guess, um, or if it's for some reason having the height that I need him to move. Um, I don't know why it would be doing that, the latter, uh, but it's entirely possible that it is. Um, so that's where we're at currently. Let's go ahead and stop playing. I'm going to hop into here. Um, so let's see. The main scripts that we're going to be concerned with today um, are going to be text quest scene loader, uh, loading view, and planes to woods minigame. These are going to be our three big ones. Um, and actually, something that I do want to do before I forget, I want to go to my loading view, and we're going to turn off show cursor on open. Now, um, the reason that I had that on there originally is because I had the you know the text input field, um, and the player needed to be able to click on there if they clicked off. Um, but I don't really need that anymore, so I don't need to show the cursor. Um, of course, that does mean that none of my mini games can use the cursor unless my well, that's not necessarily true. I guess the mini games can handle it themselves. Um, but the, the main point is that the uh, the loading view itself should not open and uh, show the cursor. Hello, Dusted. Welcome back. How are you doing tonight? All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at our actual load cover routine. Make sure that we don't do something stupid. Um, by which I mean. Uh, cause a fade out before we're ready. So let's see here. We get show load, fade out. Okay. Um, so show if show load, which means that if we're supposed to be showing our um, our loading screen mini games and loading bar, then we're going to call finish load. Come down to here. So what we do here 
you can see that if we have a current mini game, we're going to go ahead and fade that in or fade that out. Um, and what should happen is when that is done, we get this uh, callback. So if we go to end mini game, uh, that's going to say is active and callback, and then we get to start coroutine fade coroutine, which should take I think I guess it's one second. So it should take one second. Go to definition. Um, and after one second, it should you know be fully transparent, and then it should call or call that callback, um, which will be of course our loading screen right here. Fade out. We go to definition. Um, we reopen the menu, which doesn't really do anything. Uh, we are going to hide cursor, which I guess I probably should actually change that, but it's fine. Um, you know, we ha we handle all of the player stuff that we need to, and then we should do a fade out cover routine, which will fade um, our ta or our background from black to transparent, um, so that you can see everything again. Doing all right. Pretty stressed out. I'll wait for you to get back before I ask you why you're stressed out uh, and to respond to your questions. <laughs> uh, let's see. So fade out coroutine. Uh, this is pretty much doing everything that I would expect. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. That's about right. So it's fading out the entirety of my loading canvas group, which is fine. That doesn't really matter. Um, mostly it's just kind of weird. So I would like to... I'm going to try to pause it when it's like halfway through fading out. Because I'm, I'm kind of convinced that it's not fading the way I would actually expect it to. Um, so this is going to be kind of a weird situation, especially because the cursor goes away, which makes it a little harder to actively mess with. All right, so I'm going to keep this over the pause button just so that I can make sure that I get it. At least the, the lag or the hang up when you're scrolling isn't, or when it's uh, loading the actual level isn't that noticeable. Okay, so we get a little bit of fade out here. Um, let's go ahead and open up our UI. I'm going to say loading container, view loading, root. Okay, so in our mini game root, it should be fading. And before we do that, let's go up here to loading container. So this should stay at one until our mini game is entirely faded out okay so now it's completely faded out go up here we're at one all right so i guess that that does actually work um so maybe one second is just too short of a time frame then um i will also go ahead while we're here take a look at our player area you are you're in a weird spot. That actually that height seems correct, but it's hard to tell. Um, you can see that it's it's not quite where I was expecting. Um, hmm. Like our hero character, so this yellow bounding box here, that's the label. Um, the hero. What should be happening is I, I would expect it to actually be above this this line. Um, so these anchors that you can see here, that's supposed to be the top of the path, um, but it seems like they got cut off. So I'm not entirely sure why that happened, but it is not great that it did. Um, it means that we're not lurping to the correct spot. Also, it's kind of weird that our scale is... Oh, it's still going! Oh! Oh, that's, that's interesting. Um, that would explain why it only gets halfway before it kind of fades out all the way. Uh, well, 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 well. Um, let's see, so we have a, oh, right, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Okay, so that means I'm going to want to change this a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Okay, where'd you put me? There we go. Um, so we're going to comment out this chunk of code, and I guess I should stop playing. Um, so we're going to comment out base.endminigame, because we apparently don't actually want to do that um, until the fade is... Uh, we got to change how this fade is done. Um, 
So we're going to go ahead and move this. We're going to go to move player to end. And at the end of that, we will call start coroutine fade coroutine. That should handle things a little bit better for us. Um, so let's, let's try that. I think that will actually make a pretty big world of difference. Um, so now we won't start fading out until the player basically goes out of view. And after that uh, fade out happens, then we will fade out the entire loading screen. So we should have a little bit better of a, of a fade out than we did before. Um, or at the very least, a less jarring one. Um, which, you know, I'm always for less jarring transitions. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. So this should be good to go. I'm really hoping that this just fixes the couple of last bit of gripes that I had with this, because that would uh, that would be pretty wonderful. Let's go ahead and run into the forest. All right. So still have audio to do, obviously, but after that, we should be good. All right. Nice. There's like very little hang up as the level loads. Um, although that's this is actually a pretty terrible level to judge for level hangs because there's like nothing in here. Eh, pretty good overall. Um, I probably could do better with the horizontal uh, positioning. I think it kind of well. Mm, no, nah, it looks fine. I guess. Um, I am going to change, though, the total position. Let's see, where are you? Ah, here we are, player area dot height. So I'm actually going to say plus, um, we're going to say, what do I call it, hero? Yep, dot size delta dot y. So we're going to give him a little bit of a y offset. I would like him to not disappear until he's over the horizon. Um, whereas right now, you, as you can see, he kind of just shrinks down until he just vanishes before he gets over the horizon, and it kind of looks weird. Um, the expositioning is also a little weird, but eh, that's less of an issue. Um, and I'm assuming that it's doing that just because of how I'm handling the uh, the end lerps here. Um, but it should be fine, so let's go ahead and let that compile. And play. So, while we're waiting for that to happen, how's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> Let's see. We're going to get our trigger. I'm not going to do anything. Just so we can see the wonderful smash effects. Oh, that's an... I think I can... No, 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 I thought I could still hear it. Oh my, that, <laughs> hmm, okay, well, clearly not that, uh, so, wow, really? It's that huge of a difference? Huh, okay, uh, well, let's take a look at that real quick, that was really unexpected, um, how tall is it? Oh, it's 250. How is that even possible? Oh, everything's scaled. That makes sense. Okay. Crap. Uh, I mean, it shouldn't... It's. I didn't scale anything. It's because the canvas is scaled. So that... Uh, yeah, that causes a little bit of a problem. All right, fine. Um, so I can't really use size delta there. That's kind of annoying. Um, hmm. Perhaps I could... No, well, no, that wouldn't really make sense. <laughs> so I guess for now we'll leave it with no offset. Let's go ahead and let that finish compiling. Um, so let's move on to audio next, because more or less positioning is correct. Uh, so we need to crossfade all audio out whenever we transition, um, or whenever we fade to black. And then we need to obviously do the reverse. When we fade in from black, um, we need to fade audio in. And we need to assign uh, sound listeners to every mini game. Um, so that's going to be interesting. We are going to want to, let's see. 
go ahead and say, actually, no, we're not going to put you there. We're going to put you, mm, we'll put you here. So we're going to serialize field, we'll say private uh, audio listener, audio listener. Um, let's call this listener, which I think is fine. I'm pretty sure that that does not override anything, although I will go ahead and check that. I think there, there's a weird built-in thing. It might be. Oh, good. Whew. Maybe that used to be a thing, but it's not anymore. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of all of that. All right. So this audio listener is going to be um, something that gets toggled on when the minigame loads in. Um, and that's because we're going to toggle the player character's listener off. That way we don't hear things from a distance. Um, all right. So let's say... Start minigame is going to turn on that listener. So we're going to say listener.enabled equals true. Um, and minigame will do pretty much the opposite. We'll say listener.enabled enabled is equal to false. Now we also need a way of turning the player's listener on and off. Um, actually, hold on, uh, do I not, okay, just out of curiosity, not, hold on. Sounds, okay, don't do that, uh, let's go ahead, and we'll let that load, let me grab the player prefab, I don't think we have a good reference to the, um, the listener there, which means I need to add that. Prefabs. Are you gonna compile Unity? I believe in you. Not trying to doubt you, but I am a little disappointed in how long you're taking. There we go. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and just drag that into the scene for now. Uh, so it should be on our main camera. Um, but we don't have a good reference for that. Uh, let's see. Close movement, FPS input, interaction, FPS output. Uh, I could put that on the player script. Probably wouldn't hurt to have a reference to that. I mean, I guess I could just reference... Oh, no, I don't want to... I was going to say, I could just reference the camera and then get the audio listener from that, but then that would be me getting a component every time I need it, so I might as well just cache it here. So public audio listener. I almost never use listeners. Um, audio listener. Okay. And that's pretty much just going to be a public thing that I can get. We don't really care too much about that. Uh, let's see here. We are going to want to... Where are you? Uh, I guess we'll do it in... Uh, we'll probably do it in the base minigame here. Um, so we'll say... Go up here. And we're going to say... Uh, if... Global... Dot hero reference. We'll say global dot hero dot audio listener dot enabled is equal to false. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Go down here. Say it's equal to true if that's the case. Okay, so that handles setting the player's um, audio listener. Now we just need to assign this. Ha! Good. Let's go ahead and apply that real quick. Apply. Sorry, delete you. Hit save. Well, I was going to save, but of course Unity has to be selfish and compile, I guess. Ah. Mm -mm -mm. Alright. So, let's see here. <laughs> oh, you know, you know it, game dev. You know it. I'm always gentle when I apply changes to my prefabs. <laughs> Either way, welcome, game dev. 
how are you doing tonight? All right, so oh wait, this isn't gonna work. I haven't uh, I have not added a listener to my prefab yet. Let's go ahead and close this. All right, let's go up to where are you? I don't need you. Need any of this? Oops, all that. New, no, new, no, new. No. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's collapse that. Let's collapse you. And it's like way down here. It's almost like I organized my project. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to just apply it here. I think that should be fine. Uh, let's go to audio. Audio listener. It'll be off by default. Uh, we'll go ahead and reference that. Inspector is really massive. I hate having massive inspectors. Let's save. So now we should get um, we should get correct uh, audio source placement. Like it shouldn't sound distant or soft uh, because of the fact that the audio source list or the audio listener is way far away. Um, hopefully, we won't get a little pop either. I really hope we don't. Okay, so we're, it's closer, and that means that it is enabling it, um, but I guess the, the real change is going to be that we want to change how we're handling those pop sounds. Um, so, what am I currently using for that, I guess? Uh, da, 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 let's see, where, where are you? Put this in here real quick. Uh, let's go over to our prefab. Okay, so we're torch lit, right? So that's purely placeholder. Um, we're ideally going to have a 2D sound effect, not a 3D sound effect. And that means we need to actually use a 2D sound effect. So hmm. I suppose that means we're going to need a mini game sound collection. So let's go over here to data. Let's see. So to the sounds, let's go ahead and create a folder for. Uh, mini games. All right, I'm gonna create SOS. No, uh, not there. Where did I put my stuff? Uh, it should be under SOS, but maybe it's under assets. It is. That is a, com a very roundabout way for me to do that. I need to change that. Um. All right, so we're going to call that sound collection dash mini games. Cool. Uh, and now we can go ahead and just, we'll use the placeholder sound effect for now, um, which means that I think we're going to want this. We're going to want, where are you, torch lit? So we're going to grab you. Oh, crap, that's not a good indicator at all now, is it? Um, all right, give me a second here. So that's... Explosion, sm short, smooth, crackle. Okay, so let's come down here. Explosions, mm, right there. Aha! Thank you, William. Also, welcome back. Also, hello. <laughs> All over the place. Uh, okay, so we're going to call this uh, log hit. So, pretty basic. Uh, we don't really need an instance limit. Uh, we will not set it to loop. It is going to be a spatial blend of zero, so that it's 2D. Uh, and I guess we can do some random pitching. So let's go ahead and say 0.9 to 1.1. Give us a little bit of variation in there. Uh, and now, if we go over to global here, uh, we need to go to sound manager. Uh, we're going to add our mini game sound in there real quick. Cool. And now if we go to our mini game, ta-da. We're going to change that. So no longer torch hit. It's going to be log hit. Sounds right. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and let's just hit apply there. Let's delete that. And now we should be able to test it. So now when we transition to our mini game, we should have uh, the correct audio listener turned on. Uh, and when we transition out of that mini game, we should have the player's uh, audio listener turned back on instead of the mini game's audio listener. Uh, and we should have sounds that don't sound like they're a mile away now. Ha! Nice. 
All right. Let's go ahead and avoid this. Actually, let's go ahead and make sure that it's... Oh, that's interesting. It actually sounds softer when the bird chirps go away. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so we get the scaling, positioning, and now if I move around... Frack! Well, that didn't work. Uh, hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this. Disabled. Am I getting spammed that there's no audio listeners in this? I am getting spammed that there's no audio listeners. Ah! You know why? You know why that happened? It's because I completely forgot to change it in the Planes to Woods minigame. Uh, so we need to set... Let's see, where are you? In minigame, we need to do that here. Um, so let's go to loading screen minigame. I'm just going to steal this. Paste that in there. All right, should be good. So we'll give that one more test. Make sure that it run, or make sure that it works properly. Um, but that explains why we couldn't hear anything. We can't hear the game sounds. Crap! Can you hear me? Also, hello, Omer. Um, hmm. <laughs> give me a second. Let's see. Let me do a quick test here. Oh. Well, look at that. Uh, that must be because of the Windows update. Hold on. Give me a second here. Let's see. How about... Can you hear that now? Looks like that's going out, so I apologize. That was because I had a Windows update recently and it blew away all of my microphone and speaker settings. Cool. That should fix it for you guys. Thank you for letting me know about that. Yeah, I, I hate I hate doing the Windows like major Windows updates because they just they destroy your settings. In fact, they they somehow added like five speakers to my audio settings, and I have no idea where those speakers are coming from. All right, so now we are getting the sounds. It's correct. and avoid those. So we're getting our loading. It's coming in pretty well. Okay, so we get in there. We fade out. Fade in. Now can I... Nice! Alright. So we actually have uh, audio... We don't have audio fading working yet, but we do have audio transitions working. Or working. Working. Um, so we actually do get proper uh, audio listeners. Cool. Let's go ahead and stop playing. Also, welcome back, Dusted. And to respond to you, because I, because you left before I could uh, respond to your questions way back at the beginning, uh, I'm doing decent today, and why so stressed out? All right, so the next thing we want to do is we need to handle fading audio in and out. So when the, uh, when the loading screen comes in, it fades to black, um, and our audio from the main scene should fade out with it. Uh, so this is going to be kind of interesting, uh, because I need to, I was originally going to just crossfade my master audio volume down, but I can't really do that because that's going to affect, um, that's going to affect the minigame audio. So I basically have to affect, I think, <sighs> ambience, would that be enough? Ugh. Ambience and music? Sound effects might be a little awkward though, so this is going to be interesting, um. So let's go ahead and go over here to, I think our loading view is going to be the thing that we want. Um, so we will go ahead and do this. We're going to say uh, audio manager dot, let's see, set volume. And this is going to be kind of interesting because we don't actually want to uh, crossfade, we want to just set it so we can just pass in a crossfade to zero and that'll be fine. Um, we're going to say audio types dot ambience. Uh, we'll give it a normalized volume of T and then a crossfade of zero. So that means it should just apply that volume right away. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for music. And that's pretty much it. Um, so let's go ahead and do the opposite down here. Uh, again, it should just be T. Right? 
Ah, oh, crud. No, it's going to be backwards. Um, dang it. Okay. So I need to say 1 minus t here. Or 1f minus t. Um, 1f minus t. Ugh, spacing. Uh, same thing down here. I have to do the inverse, basically. 1f minus t. All right. So let's give that a shot. I think that's actually all I need to do to get the audio fading to work. Um, the real question is if that's going to be robust enough. I'm a little worried that it might not be, but it should be fine. Um, RC goes out on Monday. Project I'm on at work has a really tight deadline. Normally they're not like this. Mm, gotta love crunch time. That's, uh, that's my favorite part of, of game development. Especially when you have clients that all, that all have their deadlines line up. Um, like they're all happening at once. It's a nightmare when that happens. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and clear. Let's play. So now when we go into the transition, uh, our audio so should fade out. And when we come back into the woods, our audio should fade in. Uh, it's going to be a little harder to hear that because there's not really a lot of audio in the woods. In fact, there's no audio right now, I think. Um, but we should hear... Nice! And the log still works. That's good. Um, so pretty... Pretty decent transition there. Uh, now we'll see what happens when we transition back. Okay, so we're done there. Let's fade in. Fade out. I feel like we should probably fade our, our loading bar. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to assume that the fade in worked. Uh, I guess, how would I test that? Um, I would have to go back, which I don't think is going to happen. Although I'm actually kind of... Oh, right. Actually, I don't have... Uh, going back working yet. <laughs> I can't do that. Um, so that handles fading audio in and out. Uh, but hmm, it's kind of annoying that we can't test that. I guess that means that I should add an ambience to the woods level, but that's kind of awkward right now. I don't really have a good audio source picked out. Um, so let's go ahead and let that go. Cool. Uh, let's see. There was one more thing that I wanted to do with these. And my notebook is not around me right now, so I guess I will have to try to remember that through brute force. Hmm. I am... Let's see. Uh, oh, right. I need to clean up the minigame, so I'm not doing that right now. Um, and there's also a couple of other things that I would like to do. I would like to... Let's see. Planes, Woods minigame. Um... I would like to clean up all of the logs when it's done. So when we call in minigame, I would like all of the logs to just disappear um, so that the player can just walk forward unimpeded. Because um, right now it's kind of weird that they continue to scroll like that. I would like it to actually um, just completely stop scrolling. Um, so we are going to want to actually do a couple of things. Uh, we need to go up here to uh, Plains to Woods Tree. We need to go to this script. We're going to have to change some stuff here. Well, not change, but add some uh, functions. Same thing with da, 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 planes to woods obstacle. Go to definition. Go ahead and pull that in. Get rid of some things that we don't need. And all right. So we are going to want to have a start and stop function. No. Actually, we're just going to want a stop function. Uh, so... Thank you, Dermata, for the follow. So we want a function that's basically going to uh, tell our trees and our obstacles to stop moving. That way, when the player moves forward and scales off towards the horizon, it doesn't look like the camera is still moving. We want it to make it seem like the camera has stopped moving and the player is just like, going off. Uh, so we're going to say... Oops, I think. Do, do, do. We're going to say... Nope, not private. Public void stop... Um, we're, yeah, stops fine. Uh, then we're going to say we need a bool up here, I guess. Um, so we're going to say private bool can scroll is equal to false. Um, in initialize, after that's all done, we'll go ahead and say um, can scroll is equal to true or true. Uh, stop will say can scroll is equal to false, and that's all it's really going to do. Uh, and then down here in update, we're just going to say, we're going to wrap the entire thing in if can scroll, um, then we're going to do something. Well, do all of that. So that should fix that. Um, 
when we go over to our Insta Woods minigame, we want to, when we call in minigame, hide flavor text, move player to end. Um, we're going to call 4 int i equals 0, i is less than trees dot count, i plus plus. We're just going to say trees at i dot stop. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure that that looks right. Um, hopefully we won't get into an awkward spot where it doesn't spawn more trees. Um, oh crap, although that is a thing, <laughs> I need to uh, tell it to not spawn more trees. Uh, let's see, which actually might already be handled and yeah, is active, which gets set to false. So never mind, that's, a, that's something I don't have to worry about. Um, so let's just hope that we don't get a weird, awkward gap that we get stopped on so it's hard to tell if we've actually done anything. All right, let's go ahead and give that a shot again. Also, I guess uh, this always happens. I feel like I should apologize because we're in one of those situations where um, I'm doing something very specific to the game and I'm not showing off the full gameplay of, of text quests. And I always feel bad whenever new people come to the stream. And it's like, well, we're not really working on the main parts of the game today. Um, not that we're not working on something important, but... Uh, I always feel awkward whenever uh, new viewers come by, and I'm not working on the main like mechanics of text quest, just kind of some side stuff. All right. Uh, it was kind of awkward. I didn't notice. Um, let me try that again. One more time. This would much. This would be much faster if I uh, had a mini game for going back to the uh, to the woods setup, but uh, I do not. <laughs> Although it's probably going to be the exact same minigame, actually, now that I think about it. Um, there's really not going to be any difference between the two. So I might as well just uh, flip that. Hmm. That could work. So we might actually set that up next. Um, so we're going to be paying attention to the trees to see if they stop scrolling. And don't look at the loading bar, because that distracts me enough that I don't pay attention to the trees. Okay, give us some trees. Good! So the trees stop. You can see them there. Nice. So that does pretty much what I was expecting. Um, for the actual... For the logs, I guess we can stop them, and then we'll recycle them at the end. Um, so we won't just make them disappear. We'll just, we'll just uh, have them be stopped. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say for int i equals 0, i is less than obstacles dot count, i plus plus. And we need to have a similar function inside our next to wood obstacle. Uh, let's see, speed, speed, speed. Cool. So we're going to say private uh, bool can scroll equal to false. And I guess we're going to put that actually down here. Uh, we're going to go to initialize. That will say can scroll is equal to true. Say public void stop. And we're going to say can scroll is equal to false. All right, that should handle that. Then we're going to say if can scroll. Do all this fun stuff. I got to say it's super awkward having these update calls. I almost never have update calls and trying to move into using update more often so that I can avoid the overhead of coroutines being started is kind of a weird experience for me. Uh, for so many years, I was told, just don't do update. Um, but now I'm, I can't do that anymore. All right, so we're going to say obstacles of i dot stop. Okay, so that should stop the logs from scrolling. Uh, we are also going to want to have, I think, a cleanup minigame function. So let's go ahead and go over here to test loading minigame. Oh, no, wrong thing. Where are you? Uh, oh, there it is. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Um, so we're going to want to have a abstract function that is public abstract void cleanup. And that's just going to be the thing that gets called. Um, when we want to, you know, clean up all of our spawned objects, get rid of whatever audio listeners we have set up. Uh, well, I guess it wouldn't be that because we only have the one. Um, but you know, basically make sure that the everything's properly recycled as needed. Um, 
update is good for things you're doing every frame. Yes, that's true. Um, but the main the main reason that coroutines are super nice is because you can do stuff in a more controlled manner. It lets you break things out into individual coroutines um, into man and into manageable chunks of code. Um, but it's just less efficient to do that than an update. And mm, I guess it, it makes sense for me to have this kind of like cooldown system where I, I have things in update that's just, you know, subtracting from a float that's a cooldown. And then, then we do stuff when that cooldown gets to a specific point. Um, it's just awkward going back to that workflow because I haven't really done that for so long. Um, but yeah, it does It does make sense here. Um, it's just it's just weird for me to see update. I'm usually, I usually do everything I can to avoid updates. <laughs> uh, okay, so da, 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 let's see, where are you? to come to I guess we would do it up here at the top under initialize so we're going to say uh, public void oh, I'm sorry not void override uh, cleanup okay get rid of that throw mm -hmm. I'm excited for the job system yeah I'm really I'm really excited to mess with that um, it's not out yet, which is kind of weird. Like the 2018 beta is exists, but I don't think the job system is in it, because um, it's supposed to come at a later point in the beta, uh, which is weird to me. Um, all right, so cleanup's not really going to do anything right now, um, but we will go ahead and say clean up. Oh, not that. We're going to say if current minigame uh, does not equal null, then we will say current minigame dot cleanup. Okay. Now, let's see here. Where's cleanup minigame getting called? That gets called on close. That makes sense. Um, and actually, we can get rid of the stop all coroutines because it's not going to be doing anything. So that should be good for that. That should properly recycle everything or at least initiate the process to do so. Um, I think it's 2018.3. Really? I thought it was supposed to launch with 2018. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's kind of disappointing. I was really looking forward to learning that whole process. Um, I already put in the effort for assembly definition files in 2017.3, and I'm already starting to look into the whole data-oriented programming style. So, you know, they got me on board with that stuff. I just, they won't give it to me. I want to try it. It's like, yes, I'm willing to, to totally change my my coding style if it will give me a ton of extra performance. Um, all right, so what do we need to actually clean up with this? Uh, f I suppose the big thing would be um, path complete. OK, uh, so we're going to want to go over to this. Uh, and we're going to say. Or int i equals zero. I is less than trees dot count i plus plus. And then we're gonna do another for loop for int i equals zero. I is less than obstacles dot count i plus plus. And we're gonna unassign all of our event listeners. So we're gonna say trees of i dot on cleanup minus equals on Tree cleanup, then obstacles of i dot on cleanup, minus equals on obstacle cleanup, and we're also going to say obstacles of i dot on path complete, minus equals on obstacle path complete. Okay. Uh, I forget if obstacles have a cleanup that I added to them or not. Nope, just on cleanup. And get rid of this, and then we're just going to go ahead and say, uh, we're pretty much just going to recycle them, and I want to make sure that's all I have to do. Yep, that should be good. Oh, and then we'll, yeah, have to clear damage indices. That's fine. Uh, okay, so we're going to say damage indices dot clear. Oh, and I need to recycle the actual game object, don't I? Um, so I need to say pool manager dot recycle. Obstacles of i dot game object. Okay, same thing up here. I'm gonna say pool manager dot recycle uh, trees of i dot game object. Ha! So when you clear damage indices, uh, we will clear trees. Trees dot clear, and then we will tr uh, clear obstacles. Dot clear. 
All right, so that should properly clean things up. And that's only called on close, which should only be called at the end of fade out right there. Looking good. And oh, you know what? Actually, uh, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and hard set these guys to be what they should be. Oh, is that right? Yeah, no, no, that's right. That's right. Uh, so this is going to be set to 1F and 1F. Then we're going to go up here, set this to 0F. I don't know why I make sound effects. <laughs> it's more exciting that way. Uh, all right, so that compile. And let's take another crack at that. So now we should have proper audio fading. We should have um, uh, proper recycling of everything. And that means that when we get into the... Uh, into the woods, we should be able to pause real quick and just take a look at our pool manager, make sure that everything looks right. Uh, oh, actually, I almost forgot. Uh, let's see. So when we request a minigame, we do that. And when we clean up a minigame, we want to call clean up on it. And then we also need to um, recycle the minigame itself. So I'm going to say pool manager dot recycle uh, current minigame dot game object. Okay, and then we will say uh, current minigame is equal to null. So uh, we need to do that too. Otherwise, we might get some oddity when we try to load the screen again. I know the feeling. I'm probably going to have to factor or refactor a huge chunk of my game. That's how things go sometimes. Yeah. I honestly don't know if I'm going to really change it for text quest because I don't, I don't think that the job system is really going to help me very much because I'm not I'm not doing really crazy stuff here. I don't have like a thousand units all on on the screen at any given time. I'm not I'm not doing anything like that. Um, so I'm not sure I would get a huge performance boost really from it. Um, but certainly it's it's something that I would like to know how to do. Um, and if it's if it can be applied to to pretty much any other concept or any new game projects that I work on, then of course I'll try to stick to that to that uh, convention. So we get our fade out. It is kind of jarring how it's super loud here. And then once you actually start the load, it gets a lot quieter. I'm not entirely sure why that's the case. Like, it just sounds quieter. Um, fade in. All right. Let's go ahead and pause real quick. Take a look at our UI, go to our loading container, set to zero, that's fine. Okay, get our root. Minigame area is empty, that's good. It means that it was recycled. Uh, let's see, we have minigame, planes to woods or pool. Okay, it's right there, that's good. Interesting, our audio listener is still on. I, hmm, really? Oh. Duh, it's because I forgot to do that part. Um, let's see, what else do we need to do? Uh, we have lob obstacle pool, or log obstacle pool. That is correct. All of it is positioned. Cool. Uh, where are... Where are the trees? Uh, that's... Ah, there it is, tree label pool. Um... It's immediately underneath there. Okay, so it looks like that all got recycled. Cool. Uh, so we should be able to let's let's set up uh, the transition from the woods back to the plains, uh, and it's pretty much going to be the exact same mini game, just in reverse. Um, although that does mean I'm going to have to go into our woods layout real quick because I need to uh, need to add some clutter. Uh, so we're going to hop over to our woods level real quick the woods I mean I might <laughs> yeah it sucks it always sucks refactoring your code um, especially if it's like a whole system like a systemic rewrite it it just sometimes it's not worth it um, all right so let's go ahead and load our woods layout for the entrance here uh, da, 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 da. okay so we're probably gonna want right about there uh, we're going to need. Hmm. We are going to want to have, I think, clutter. So 
people want a loading screen. So, da, 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 da. let's see here. We're going to need an empty game object. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, level transition planes. Okay. Let's go ahead and hit F over here. We're going to add a physics box collider. It's going to be a trigger. We're going to also add a, did I call it scene transition? I do. Target level is going to be planes. Target spawn point is going to be planes forest. Player tag is player tag. That's all good. All right. Let's go ahead and resize this. So X size should be 10, I believe. Uh, y size. Five plenty. We'll give it a Z of I don't know three just for safety, um, and then a offset of point no, not point two five two point five. Cool. So that's that's our very very basic uh, level transition. And that's going to be in our clutter. Um, so I need to go to clutter. Grab this. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and pull this in here. All right, we're going to go ahead and duplicate that. Let's say level transition grove. Grove. Let's go ahead and grove is going to change some stuff. Uh, grove. Grove. And that's pretty much it for that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and we're also going to need to affect our clutter ID. Clutter type. All right, uh, we are going to also go ahead and have transitions here. So we're going to say uh, planes transition is equal to one. Grove transition is equal to two. Cool. Looking good. Let's go ahead and save that. And then we're going to need to have that clutter. Um, in our data group, of course. So let's go ahead and grab that. Ta -da. Oh, that's the wrong thing, actually. Uh, clutter is on the actual woods object. Let's see. There's going to be a lot going on. I was planning on probably having to use threads anyway for some of the heavier subsystems. That is still something I need to learn how to do. I haven't really dove into threads. Um, I've been, I've like peeked at it, but I haven't really done anything with it. I feel like that would be a very, very useful system to know. Um, if I can use something more Unity friendly, I want to. Yeah, Unity does not like multi-threading. <laughs> Although, some of the new stuff is supposed to handle that, isn't it? It's supposed to be a lot easier to multi-thread. Or to run on multiple threads, I thought. Or the, I thought that was part of the job system, anyway. Um, okay, so we have what's layout. Here we are, clutter. Uh, so we're going to add two things. Oh, crap. Why did I do that? <laughs> I don't know why I thought typing two would add to eight. Okay. Uh, so we're going to say planes transition and a grove transition. Let's go ahead and select this stuff. So we have our grove transition. We have our planes transition. Cool. So now all that stuff should be spawned in. And uh, just to test that real quick, let's go ahead and delete this. Oh, crap, I almost forgot. It's very important that these guys are in the ignore raycast layer. Let's really hope that those layers don't get reassigned, because that would suck. Um, okay, so now when I play, I should just get popped in at the beginning. Uh, it's not going to work, because I forgot to assign it. <laughs> okay, woods layout. Let's go ahead and load in our entrance. Mm -hmm. Right about here. Okay, clutter is now going to be planes transition. And that should be all we need. Let's go ahead, save this, and play. Yeah, it's a big part of the job system that I want. Yeah. I don't know. Part of me feels like when the job system eventually arrives, it's going to be not nearly as cool as everyone thinks that it is. Because I think it's going to be super cool, and I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be actually that cool. And then I'll be sad. Cool. The null reference was expected, but that's uh, that kind of makes sense. Interesting, we have two audio listeners in the scene. I wonder why. Well, all right. Um, 
So this should actually pop us back at the beginning of the wood or of the woods entrance there. Hmm, maybe. Oh wait, wait, what? Did my null reference give me enough of a problem? Okay. Um actually yeah, that that would make sense. If I hit a null reference, it's just gonna break the UI. Uh so I need to just to be safe, wrap this. If current minigame does not equal null. There we go. Because there, there could be weird situations in which I wouldn't want that mini game to exist. Um, which kind of actually makes me think, what should I do when you load in from the main menu? Hmm. I probably want a specific ASCII art transition for that. Or I could just do text. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, oh, wait, no. That's... the Well... Yep, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to figure something out for that. I don't know what I, what I want to do with that ex exactly. Uh, okay. So, real quick, let's go ahead and go to our loading screen. We're going to need our mini game. We're just going to double up on that. We're going to come up to here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and duplicate planes to woods. Uh, and we're going to just create a new folder here. We're going to call this uh, woods to planes. Go ahead and pull this down here. We're going to rename it. Call it Woods to Planes. Woods to Planes. I'm just going to flip these. So Woods to Planes. We'll keep the content the same for now because we just need it for a test. Uh, let's see. We are aware. Did you go? Here we are. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and duplicate this. Hmm. Rename it. Woods to planes. Uh, we will pull in different loading text because we're going to change that eventually. And that's pretty much all we need to do except for the last thing, which is just going to be assign that to our actual loading view. Woods to planes. Cool. So now we should have loading screen minigames for both transitioning to the woods from the planes and tr transitioning to the planes from the woods. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to jump over to the planes again. Planes, 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 planes. Where are you? There. And I think there's actually, before I forget, there's... Uh, we'll we'll take a look at it so I can observe it while it's happening. Um, I know that the loading screen or the loading bar needs to be reset on close. Currently, it's not, um, which means that it starts at one hundred percent and then snaps down to zero, which is kind of weird. Uh, all right, so okay, so we get our loading level, and then we're gonna get. We're just gonna let this load. I'm actually gonna have to go for the night. Thanks for streaming. See you next time. All right, thanks for stopping by, Dusted. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the situation doesn't get too much more stressful for you. I'm sure that the log sounds don't help. <laughs> uh, but hopefully everything clears up at work, so it's not quite as stressful for you. All right, so now let's try transitioning back. We should have a similar thing. Oh my goodness! What is happening? What terrible things have we wrought? It... it um, oh my goodness, what's up with this clipping? <laughs> what happened? Oh god, what did we do? Why is the clipping range so low? Oh. Okay. Uh... Wow. I don't know what happens. I don't. I don't know what happened there. Um, huh. So is it that? Yeah, it's that. Oh, I know what it is. Duh. <laughs> That's my fault. Okay. I forgot that in the uh, in the woods, I I shorten your camera frustrum, uh, because there's no reason for you to need to see super far out and thus render all of the trees when I have fog. So I just shorten the camera frustrum so that it culls everything. Um, so that's, that's why, 
that's why that happens. And I forgot to change it back when you transition out of that, uh, or out of the woods. So, um, yeah, that is why, and that is something that I need to fix. So, we're gonna, we're gonna fix that. Um, okay, I, I got you. I'm on to you. <laughs> Oh geez, that was that was terrifying. Um, although, yeah, we do also have a problem there in that. Goodness gracious me, there was like no time for that loading screen mini game to play, because um, the planes apparently just loaded like like that. So, uh, okay, that's interesting. Um, hello, Garrett. Welcome back. It goes um, pretty well, actually. Here, I'll go ahead and show you it. <laughs> we just ran into this, and it's it's not a bug. I panicked for a second. I wasn't sure what it was, but I, I did figure it out. Um, and also, I want to test if uh, loading from the woods to the planes without being in the planes first will actually slow down load times. I'm kind of curious about that. Um, let's go ahead and transition back to the planes. Uh, and yeah, if, if you look at the top, you can see that the uh, loading bar starts at 100%, which is not what we want. Um, so let's go ahead, let this finish loading. Okay, so we get that. We fade in. Yeah, so this is uh, <laughs> this is what we were greeted with when we transitioned back from the uh, woods. And I was incredibly confused as to why everything was like this. And it took me a second to realize that it was the camera fresh drum. It was set to coal super close, uh, because that's what I do in the uh, in the woods. So we're going to fix that. We're going to uh, set it so that when you transition from the woods, uh, we set your, your camera culling distance to be correct. Um, so that's how we're doing tonight. How are you doing? All right, uh, so we actually need to change uh, level transition grove. I think I'm going to need to make a specific scene transition child class that uh, that is basically going to reset your camera fresh drum. Um, so let's go ahead and let's see environment uh, overworld not woods uh, and we are going to want to have a woods scene transition ah, woods scene transit woods scene transition why is that so hard for me to say woods scene transition Blah. Tongue twister. Uh, so we're going to say woods, scene, transition. I think it's because it's a double S followed by a TR, which makes it sound weird. Well, a TR following an end, or an in sound. Well. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. Cool. So we're going to have this derive or namespaced in text quest. We're going to have this derive from scene transition. And that means we actually need to go to scene transition and... Oh, good, I already made these virtual. Ha ha ha! Isn't that nice? Um... Huh, then yeah, all I need to do is override start transition here. That's kind of nice. Okay, uh, let's see what scene transition. Let's go ahead and say override start scene tra or start transition. I'm going to just call base dot start transition and then we'll say up here... Uh, serialize field, private, float, um, camera, restroom, uh, crap, I have no idea what I want to set that to by default. Uh, let's go ahead and have that load. So I need to grab the main camera from the player and then store that. And then collapse all this because I don't need these open. Uh, let's see, where, where are you? Fabs. Doing well. Finished my assembly definition files adventures. Not going to use them. They don't support partial classes, which I use in a few places. Plus, they make a mess of the Visual Studio project. That is definitely true. It, God, it's a nightmare when you have to recompile your project because it just takes forever for Visual Studio to to unload and then reload those DLLs. It kind of sucks. Um, that's cool. Uh, what tool are you using? Also, I, I will say that I I have managed to avoid partial classes, mostly because I'm not entirely sure how to use them. Like, I know 
I, I think I get the idea conceptually of breaking things up into partial classes, but I never quite understood how they functioned. So I just kind of avoided them. Uh, let's see. Woods, 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 woods. Ah, right. I was looking for the player prefab. Sorry, I got a little distracted there. Um, player, hero. And I look at our main camera. Okay, so far planes is going to be set to 800. Okay. Let's rename that to camera far plane. And we're going to say uh, if. I guess we're not going to do an if because this is this is an all or nothing. It has to do this. So we're going to say global dot hero dot camera, or I guess main camera um, dot far clip plane is equal to camera far plane, which I'll go ahead and rename to far clip plane. And then we'll go ahead and tooltip this so that I don't forget what it is. Uh, we're going to say uh, distance to set the players. Oh, crap. No. No, I'm not going to do that here. Oh, jeez. All kinds of things can mess up, actually. Um, so I'm thinking of, like, what happens if you save and quit while you're in the woods? We need to... We need to set the globals, or the heroes, uh, far clip planes right away. Oh, jeez. That is... That's not great. Um, okay. Um, hmm. Could we get away with uh, doing this in... Let me check. I'm going to go to Woods Manager. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, sorry. Not, not Woods Manager, just the Woods Manager. Um, so on cleanup, so on cleanup level, um, we are going to need to say, oh man, that's all kinds of messed up. Um, if global dot hero reference, um, then we'll say global hero dot main camera dot uh, far clip plane we'll do a magic number for now and set that to 800 f uh, that's actually uh, I think that's a better option um, we need to go to text scene loader real quick Let's see uh, mad compile time optimizer just move scripts in the standard assets folder where they don't get recompiled yeah that, that's understandable um, you just have to be careful when updating assets move the scripts back before updating yeah, I, uh, geez, um, I really wish that Unity's method of updating packages and third-party assets was better. And in fact, I think they're finally doing something about that. There's, I think they're releasing the package manager or whatever they call it in 2018, um, which will automatically update those things for you? Question mark? Um, mostly, mostly the main problem I have is that if you just do a straight, like, overwrite, of uh, existing files, like let's say I have Text Mesh Pro, and then I pull in the new version of that. Um, half the time, if I don't delete the original folder and then just re-import the new one, um, you'll get like weird script mashing together, where you'll have old code and new code together. And that's really terrible when that happens. Um, it doesn't always happen, but it, it happens if in rare cases. Um, anyway, so let's see. Current Level manager. So when we fade out, we clean up our dropped items, um, we set our session to be whatever it should be, and then we, let's see, we should clean up level. All right. And I, I don't think that that is going to get rid of the player characters, so that should actually be a better option. Um, let's go up here to Woods Info. That should be good. Um, so we're going to transition from the woods to the plains real quick. And, you know, our, our far clipping plane should be correct when it transitions back. It should get set to 800. 
Um, and then we're going to go back to the woods, and then I'm going to save and quit. Which is going to be super awkward. Um, but we're going to do it. Uh, oh, jeez, that's going to be all kinds of awkward. I have no idea how I'm going to make menu cameras work in this. I guess it's just going to all have to be uh, of trees and fog. Um, or just the one. I might just have, like, one. Whatever. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead transition back. Yeah, asset management needs a complete overhaul. It's a mess. Yeah, from the in-editor browser on down. Yep, yep, yep. I really wish they just had better better ways of doing that. Oh, cool. Fog is totally still a thing, too. <laughs> ah, like all of it. All of it sucks. It's all terrible. It's all coming apart. Um, although, actually, I don't think the fog looks too bad. Eh, it's a little too gray, but it's a nice effect. Having that distance, kind of. Um, it would look better if it didn't affect skybox. So I'm actually kind of curious. I'm going to pause this real quick. Uh, let's go to our main camera. So there should be a fog effect. Um, can I use that? Hmm. That's not half bad. I kind of like that. Hmm. It gives the scene a little bit more uh more of a believability. Things don't look quite as in focus. Probably could be toned down a little bit. Uh, let's see. Oh, right. It uses the lighting fog. I forgot about that. So that explains why it actually looks pretty decent. Um, and not, like, super thick. So, oh, well, I might just, uh, hmm. might, uh, might go ahead and change that. Hmm. That actually works out pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and stop playing. Yeah, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, 2018.1 is going to ship with the package manager or whatever they call it, which is like a weird JSON manifest that Unity will ping and then automatically download assets for, I think. I have no idea how that's actually supposed to work with third-party assets, but it does seem to work pretty well for Unity's um, built-in stuff, so I'm kind of curious to see how it works. Um, ah. And give me a second, I need to blow my nose. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, so we are going to... Let's see. This is where things get a little awkward, I think. Um, let's go to the Woods Manager again. Woods Manager. Now, I'm guessing... Yep, there we go. Um, we're going to enable post-process effect. Is that going to give us this thing? Uh, no, we are going to... Say post process controller dot get post effect. Um, crap, it's gonna be ah crud. Fog mode. Um, mm, dang it, I don't actually know what it's called. Uh, let's see here. So we're going to go to the camera. It's going to be global fog. Which is, I'm sure, a built-in Unity one. It is. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and... That means we have to come up here. Gross. Um, so we're going to say... Unity... Was it standard assets? Dot... Image effects dot... Fog... Seriously? Okay, where are you from? Where are you from? Tell me your life story, my friend. You have got to be kidding me. It's private? Ah, oh, jeez. I... Why? Why does Unity do this? It's really annoying, but they love to stick their crap in internal and private... Fo in internal and private scripts. I have no idea why. It drives me nuts! 
I suppose that's fine. I really should move to like the Uber global or whatever it's called, the post stack. Ugh. Fine. You won't let me have my fun right now, Unity. Um, then we're going to go over here. I'm going to go to uh, Planes Manager. And I'm going to add a to-do so that I don't forget that fog looks nice. And I'm going to just say, like, right up here. Well, right here. I'm going to say, to-do, turn on fog when entering. Wow, I can't spell. Entering. <sighs> I really detest when Unity does that. It's just, it's just really annoying that they do that because they have... They have some pretty good utility stuff in their scripts, and then they just lock it behind internal stuff. And I just, I don't know why. I don't know why they do that. It, it drives me nuts that they do that. Um, like someone over at Unity is making the conscious decision, hey guys, what if we had all of these really, really cool uh, utilities that we could give people? Well, that's cool. But, but what if we made them all internal classes so they can't actually access it? <laughs> Ah, then cue the lightning strikes, you know, in the background. But seriously, it's so freaking stupid. Um, okay, so I guess I can't do that. Uh, but that's fine for now. Um, it does seem to be setting the, our, our camera far distance plane, which is the important thing. Um, the next thing that we want to handle uh, is, I guess I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of that script. Uh, close this. Come down to... Where are you? Mm -hmm. Get rid of wood scene transition, because we don't need it. I had to deal with that on a UI component. They computed some size wrong, and the only way I could fix it was to re-implement the whole class. Ah, oh, that's gross! Oh yeah, no, and yeah, the UI stuff is a nightmare too. If you're doing any sort of like custom layout group, um, like they, they make arbitrary, they lock arbitrary things for some reason, and, and you just have to dig into the source code and pull it out and put it in again. I don't know why they do that. Uh, right, and, th and that's, the, that's the way it should be, right? Is most of, your, most of your classes should be public unless you know that they will never need to be accessed outside of, outside of your, your assembly or outside of um, that specific class that's looking at it. It just, it, I don't know why they do it. Know. I'm sure there is some philosophy to it, like you know, only exposing things that you know need to be exposed. But if they have a class called utility, or that has a utility in its name, then you should assume that other people will want to use it. Ugh. Okay. Um. <laughs> Gross. What are you talking about, cool? Whenever I do that, I'm just like, mm, that's sexy right there. Let me tell you. Um. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. How have you been? All right, so... Hmm. What would be the next thing that we want to do, then, um, since Unity has ruined my fun? Um, hmm. Actually, would it be a... Do I have the post-process stack in here right now? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I may or may not. I would not be surprised if I did, and I would not be surprised if I did not. So standard assets, post-processing. I do not think that I do. Interesting. Okay. So I guess we'll want to do that then. Um, it's something that I've been meaning to do for a while, and I just have not. Let's see, so there should be a get. Let's see, post-processing. Have they finally moved the post-processing stack from GitHub, or is it still just here? Because I know that the stuff they had on the asset store is like completely out of date, although I guess I should take a look at that to confirm that. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So there's going to be what is it? post-processing stack. This is version 1. Point, yeah, this is, this is totally outdated, isn't it? Yep. They move it every Monday. Oh, really? They move it? Wait. Are you sure? Because version 2 has been on GitHub forever, 
and not here in the store. Um, eh, I don't know. Um, I'll go ahead and download this, and I will also real quick just double check that I don't have like post. Let's see, post effect. I don't think I do. Nope. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and download that and pull it into our project. Um, so let's go ahead and download. So we're gonna start messing around with the post-processing stack, which I have kind of avoided because uh, at work we messed around with this and we found like just having the post-processing stack on your on your camera, like even if it was completely disabled, just having it. Well, no, I think I think if it's enabled at all. Um, even if you have no post-process effects activated, um, your frame rate, our frame rate tanked by like 15 frames, and I have no idea why. Um, none of us could figure that out. It was very strange. It must. We assume that it's something to do with just the fact that post-processing stack is doing something, regardless of whether or not you're using that thing. But hello, Gelmega. Welcome back. How are you doing tonight? Man, getting like a bunch of people back. Feels good, man. Uh, let's see. Post-processing. So I guess we're going to want uh, this. Okay. So we're going to move the post-processing folder into... Not streaming assets. Standard assets. Uh, which... Crap. They already have one called post-processing. So yes, I must have done this. Right? Like, surely, unless this is just really old stuff. Yeah, post-processing behavior. So yeah, I totally have this. Okay. Um, then that means I should be able to just drag and drop this, and it should be fine. So let's go ahead and show an explorer. Let's go to post-processing. And actually, real quick, I want to make sure that they're doing the same thing. We're looking at editor gizmos. They are not the same, which could just mean that they changed the layout of things. <sighs> Great. That's going to make things super awkward. Well, all right. Um, I guess that means I'm just going to have a folder called post-processing stack. Then. Create folder. Uh, we'll say post-processing stack. Go ahead and pull that in. This will be interesting to see if I get any any conflicts. Because I feel like I have it in the project already. Which probably just means that I need to erase that uh, post-processing folder and pull it in again. Let's see. What are you working on? So we just finished up um, ASCII art minigames, or at least paving, laying the groundwork for those. Um, and we have a minigame for the transition from the plains to the woods and the woods to the plains. Um, they're basically the same minigame. Um, and now we can expand on that architecture for further um, transition minigames. So whenever you go from uh, one scene to the next, you'll get a little ASCII art minigame. Yep, there it is. Ha ha! So yeah, those, those are totally the same thing, um, which means that I just need to erase this and just completely delete this post-processing folder um, and then re-import it. So, have some time again. School is basically done. Now just 18 weeks of internship. Well, that's that's practically nothing. <laughs> Actually, 18 weeks will probably fly by, but you'll probably get a ton of experience from that. Uh, internships are great for that. And actually, I'm kind of curious. Uh, let me go ahead and pull my hero into the scene. I don't think we have the post-processing stack on the player, because I'm pretty sure I took it off. Yeah, I did. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and get rid of this. So we're going to be doing some post-processing stuff today. That's going to be interesting. New ground for me. Um... All right, so we're going to go, where Where are you here above us? Okay, so we're going to get rid of this post-processing. Then I'm kind of curious to see if anything breaks. And if it does, then we will revert those changes. I probably should have committed before I did that, but it's okay. 
Um, currently working on file system Win32 API fun. Fun indeed. Is that for your internship or just your own personal stuff? Um, doing forward or deferred rendering? I'm actually using deferred rendering. I was doing forward, but um, I needed to jump over to deferred rendering for uh, lights because some of my scenes have quite a bit of lights in them and forward when or forward ah, forward rendering just did not like that um forward rendering if you have more than like five pixel lights it's just like nope pfft, way too expensive to do anything whereas deferred can can handle that a little bit easier um uh so for anti-aliasing uh the answer to that is yes and no um Oh, am I going to have to update Cinemachine? That probably makes sense. Although I actually probably need to update that anyway. I think that's going to be outdated. Uh, let's see. So now I can go ahead and drag that back in. Let's go over to... I guess we'll go ahead and put it in the same spot. Let's come over here again. Put that there. Um, so as far as anti-aliasing work... Or, goes i did have a super sample or super sample anti-aliasing solution um and of course now that asset has been deprecated on the asset store which means that they're not supporting it anymore so i'm going to have to say no on that um but it's kind of awkward because anti-aliasing actually is really really frustrating um i remember when i was messing around with the post-processing stack temporal anti-aliasing made things look too soft um oh interesting we still have some stuff that's post processing wait what oh don't be like that ah <sighs> great it assigned a new GUID, a new guid for something that shouldn't really need it How wonderful uh i'm also going to have to update cinema machine i think so let's go ahead and do that real quick over to the asset store. Uh, let's see. Yeah. No, I, I really haven't. I really haven't found a good anti-aliasing solution, um, which is not great. I need to have that, even though I. It's it's really frustrating because um, for TextQuest aesthetic in particular, having slightly smeared visuals like temporal anti-aliasing seems to do in the post effects really makes things look like crap because you can't read stuff and at that point it's like well it's more of a hindrance than anything else um let's see we'll go ahead and update some stuff i guess uh wait what are you serious ah oh, unity why do you got to be like that Great, hold on. The GUIDs are generating empty folders. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! So I have to delete all of this stuff, and then I need to click off of Unity, then come back, let it re-import, and then I'm going to click off Unity again, then come back, and then it should be good. It should have blown away all the GUIDs. Jeez, oh, I hate it when it does that. Um... Also, I need to reload this, which is going to suck, because this is what we were talking about when Garrett said that it sucks to do uh, assembly definition files. You can see it unloading and reloading all the assembly definition files. Okay, and it's back! See, it's adding GUIDs. It's, ah, come on, don't be like that. Go away. Let's see. Let's see. Internship will be very interesting. How often can you work on a texture compression streaming system for Vulkan, of which nothing is done yet? Especially interesting since a game that I play will use it in a future update. Proposal Tanks V1. Huh. Um, yeah. Good luck on, on the Vulkan stuff, because it's... Vulkan programming is just way above my head. I really wanted to learn it, but I, since I have no pressing need to do so, it's really hard to sit down and actually do it. Um, and it does not help that, goodness gracious, Vulcan programming is black magic. Like, I'm pretty sure there are ritualistic sacrifices involved. 
<laughs> okay. I think we are in a good spot now. Although I would like to actually, real quick, take a look at Cinemachine and see... Does this tell me what version it is? Because that would be really nice, and it would suck if it didn't. Uh, let's see. <sighs> Freaking really. Of course not. Why don't you tell me what version you are, Cinemachine? Uh, it's version 2.0, and they're up to 2.1, so I think this is a little outdated. Um, okay. Now, to go ahead and delete Cinemachine, which is going to make things kind of awkward. Eh, we'll hold back on that for now. Well, actually, no, I'm willing to bet the GUID thing's going to keep happening until I can clear this error, so... <sighs> Alright, deleting it. That's fine, I'm not really doing anything with Cinemachine yet anyway. Um, uh, well, I mean, we are, but re-importing it should be fine. <laughs> that NASA is a customer. <laughs> You'd be surprised who NASA seems to be, uh, involved with. They have a bunch of, uh, fingers in a bunch of different pies, even things that you wouldn't think are immediately obvious. Um, but they're really interested, actually, in a lot of game development technology. Um, especially they, they had a big push recently for VR um, because it lets them do things remotely um, or at the very least simulate and train for things. Um, so it's actually kind of funny. Anyway, uh, so now let's go ahead and click off of Unity and then click back on one more time so all the GUIDs and stuff can update and be nice. Okay, should be good. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull that stuff in again. So we're going to put this into standard assets. Don't you dare complain to me about GUIDs. I will be very angry if you do. Hmm. Woof. Wait. When you say 1, 256 by 256, do you mean 256,000? Or, because I mean, that's, you put K twice, and that makes me think you mean 256,000 <laughs> texture. That is a mega texture if I ever saw one. All right, so post-processing is now coming in. Let's see, got a bunch of, bunch of stuff that I need to update, apparently. I'll let that finish compiling, and then we'll re-import Cinemachine, and we should be back to where we were. Um, except now we should have a much nicer stack, or post-processing stack, that can do better things. I think. <laughs> and while we're in here, I'm just going to go ahead and update some stuff. Even though I don't really use these. Well, some of them. Some of them I use. But it's just good to keep these things up to date. All right. Uh, so while that's going on, let's see. Okay. Huh. Wow. That is massive. Huh. Well, hey, some people, some people like the mega texture model. Uh, all right, oh right, crap! I forgot to pull in Cinema Machine. Oop. Cinema Machine. Let's go ahead and import that. Collapse that. Import. Let's hope that it's not really messed up. That would kind of be weird. Could be that Cinemachine on the asset store is incompatible with version 2 post-processing. That'd be weird. But hopefully it's something I can fix if that's the case. Uh. Hmm. Huh. Well. 
I guess some systems just handle things differently than others. All right, so we're going to go back here to Cinema Machine. We're going to pull that under our Asset Store folder, and then we should be good. Seems like things have kind of been set up. Um, I feel like I could probably also go ahead and get rid of some of the older um, image effects, but I think I'm going to hold off on that for the stream just because I don't want to. I don't want to start ripping things out and then realize that I need them. <laughs> so I'd like to do a little bit, get a little bit of time to test that. Um, okay, so. Time to look at the post-processing stack. I guess uh, before we do anything, let's go ahead and jump over to the planes level. Then we're going to kind of use that as like a base for what how we should handle um, our post-process stuff. Let's see. I still find it funny that they found a way to compress 26 gigabytes into 3 gigabytes, but it, but it is lossy. Yeah. yeah let's see. Uh, I guess we'll save changes. I don't think it really matters much. Um, that is pretty impressive, though. But then again, I mean, you would expect that, though, from rocket scientists. <laughs> Alright, uh, so we're going to go ahead and drop the player character in here. I will go ahead and move them up. And I'm just going to go ahead and rotate them so we can get a good... A good view of right about there, I think. Okay, so on our main camera, we are going to collapse all this stuff and we're going to add component. There should be a post effects thing, right? Mm. Huh, interesting. Maybe not. I guess I can just look for it. Um, so we want post process controller, is that right? Oh wait, no, that's my script. <laughs> that's not right. Um, what is going on with my inspector here? Uh, we want to add post process base then? Is that right? Huh. I thought that Hmm. Oh, no, that's also not right. What am I doing here? Um, I thought that there was a fairly basic quick way of doing this. Uh, runtime. Is it this? No. Goodness gracious, it's been a while. Profile. I think this is yeah, that's a scriptable object. I remember that. What's the actual freaking thing that you put on your camera? Um, post process bundle, is it that? No. Nope. Well, let's see. It's got to be one of the ones with the fancy... Uh, you would think so, but apparently not. Huh. I don't... What the heck? Um, okay, let's take a look at some of this stuff. So we're going to want post-process profile, I know, is a scriptable object. And that, sh that stores all of your settings. But isn't there a function, or isn't there a script that you're supposed to put on your camera that has this stuff? Why is it not? Why can't I find it? I feel, feel like I should not have this much trouble with it. Um... Uh, Oh, uh, they actually have a nice explanation of their system on their website. May I post a link? Yeah, go ahead, Joel. Uh, feel free to post it. Um, hacking like always. Of course, Sky. Post-processing behavior. Huh. Yeah, okay, let's try that. But, like, I don't see it. I don't see post-process behavior. Like, I thought, I totally thought there was one. There, yeah, there's no post-process behavior. What happened? Is it gone? I, I'm, I'm so confused. Uh. Ah. Huh. 
Hold on. Uh, did it not like get pulled in or something? This is super weird. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, post processing. We want runtime. I'm guessing. Seriously, this is super weird. Um, yeah, it does not work. Is there Git messed up to that extent? Like, it doesn't work? <laughs> really? That's amazing. Huh. They have everything except the actual post-processing behavior. That's great. Um, let's see. Well, it's probably going to be super technical. So, so if people are curious, check out that link because that actually does sound really cool. Uh, so this is, huh? Let's see. I really don't want to do version one. I prefer to kind of stick to version two. But so that's where we are. We have assets, standard assets, and post processing, then runtime, and you can see like it's not there. <laughs> It's, it doesn't exist. Uh, so let's go to post processing. Like it's not, it's just not a script. I'm not crazy. I swear. Um, huh. That is interesting. Also weird. Uh, I guess then I'll go ahead and pull that in from the asset store. That's super awkward. That's super weird. Okay. Um, let's see. Post-processing stack. Let's go ahead and import this. Huh. So I guess the version 2 stuff on GitHub does not have that. Uh, doesn't have that. Um, so let's go ahead and collapse all of that. Collapse all of that. Uncheck you. Um, runtime. So we have post-processing behavior. Let's go ahead and just uncheck everything except post-processing and its behavior editor. Um, that is incredibly awkward, though. That's so awkward. Ah. No, I think... See, I think you're right. It should be post-processing behavior. But um, it seems like maybe it's just not in there. Uh and if you're wondering, the system was inspired by idtech mega textures, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it sounded like, because um, that that was kind of I don't want to say it was a boondoggle because it works, um, but it was it was kind of like the competing idea for storing textures, and it basically allowed to do exactly what it sounds like you're doing, where you had massive textures. Like um, I think when it was first premiered, the idea was that it was like forty thousand by forty thousand. Um, for some texture, uh, but you could store all sorts of relevant information in that, um, and it'll let you stream it in super quickly, um, even on even on devices like mobile phones. Uh, but the downside to that is that it makes everything look really static, um, like the the world is very obviously not not really capable of movement, um, and it's most notice most noticeable in scenes where you have. Uh, like just things standing around, there's like no movement whatsoever and things kind of feel really weird. Um, it's not bad. It's just like a weird quirk of it. Um, let's go ahead and, what the heck? Why'd you put a machine folder back? I moved you back. Whatever. Um, post-processing. So let's go ahead and move these guys. <sighs> okay, fine. So I guess we can't use version 2 by virtue of the fact that it's broken. Ah, thanks. Thanks, Unity. Thanks a bunch. I mean, to be fair, yes, it is a beta, what they have on, on GitHub, but, like, seriously, it's missing its most important script? Like, what the heck? It's literally useless without without that behavior. That's amazing. I don't even know how they got that up onto GitHub like that. Ah. Speaking of boondoggles, this is kind of turning into one. I feel like I've spent 20 minutes trying to just get post-processing to be a thing! Which is funny, because that means that all I have to do to fix this is just 
undo that delete. That's all I have to do. Hey, which is all I'm going to do after I get this stuff to compile. And I guess, do I need to reload you? No, you're fine. Okay, go ahead and clear all this stuff out. Yes, yes, I know you're going to be sad. Okay, so we want to undo our deletion of that. Are you serious? Did you re-add? What is going on here? Oh no, Cinema Machine just added that. That's 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 fine. Um, let's see, deletion, 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 deletion. I really wish we could scale this because it's annoying to have to scroll through all of this. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Ah, here we are. Let's see, uh, assets, standard assets, store, Cinema Machine, Blackboard, asset store, Cinema Machine, asset store, all the Cinema Machine stuff, free looks, scripty. States, noise, all cinema machine. Cinema machine post effects, post, uh, let's see, post process layer, blah, 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 all the cinema machine crap. Okay, yeah, you're just not going to play nice. Looks like there's not a parent folder. Ah, here we are. Um, so we want to undo that. Hold on. Yes. Okay, we're going to undo that folder. So now we should have all of the existing uh, uh, post-processing behaviors that I had in the project. Um, I guess we can't update to a newer version because the newer version just straight up does not work or is missing a very important script, um, which is very annoying, but that's fine. Um, so this... Hmm. This is going to be interesting because I have not really dug into the post-processing stack. Um, and what's, you know what I guess I could have done is uh, I could have just kept that deleted and then uh, re-imported it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> ah, now the new cinema machine is broken. So I guess I have to update anyway. Um, that's that's fair. Whatever. Just, ugh. <sighs> I can't have nice things. Okay. Um, so we are going to... Let's go to our asset store real quick. Let's import this. Just to see what the differences are first. And then I'm going to have to delete the post-processing folder, I'm sure. Um, maybe not. We can try this. All right. All right, let's go ahead and just uh, import that. See what happens. <laughs> it's kind of disappointing, though, that we can't use version 2. I'm actually not sure what the main difference between the two is. Um, well, that's importing. I guess we can take a look. Uh, let's see. And I guess there's not really a good change set. They renamed it? Oh, what's it called? Oh, seriously? I thought, wait, no, post-process layer is a, is a scriptable object, isn't it? No, I guess not. Well, crap. <sighs> I guess I'm going to have to because it looks like... Uh... That's so weird. So Cinemachine is dependent on the version of post-processing that is not on the asset store, but is on GitHub. Okay. <sighs> Deleting that. Then we're going to re-import. I'm going to reassign. Oh my goodness. Why would they call it Layer? That is not a very intuitive name. Post-processing Layer makes me think that it's supposed to be like a layer of the post-processing effect. That's actually what I, why I thought... That's why I skipped over that script. I thought that it was just the uh, the base class for writing your own custom... Okay. 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 
Oh, man. Sometimes, sometimes, man, sometimes Unity just really, really murders me. Um, all right, let's, let's redo this again, again, for like the third or fifth time. Hey. Okay, this time for sure, it's going to work. Gonna be very sad and mad otherwise. Ah, man. Freaking ridiculous. This is what happens when you don't mess with post processing stacks at work. You don't know how they work. I swear, if you are still messed up, send a machine, I am going to be very, very angry. Don't you dare be messed up still. Oi, 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 oi. This has been a journey, like a trek, to get this to function. Like, we haven't even been able to mess with this. It's been like 20 minutes of just me importing scripts. Oi. And this is when I, or this is why I need to get mini games implemented into my avatar. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, looks like that's at least done. Cool. So let's try this again. So we're gonna add component post process post process layer, I guess. Oh my! Like it instantly gave us noise, which I do not want. Um, wow, I have, I have no clue. Temporal, except it looks like dirt. Yeah, they completely changed. Is this right? Uh, oh, okay, I don't, okay, whatever, I don't have volume blending, so I'm assuming that volumes are meant to be, like, post-processing chunks, um, like, areas that you can walk into, and then it'll change your post-processing to match theirs, um, huh, this might be something that I should not tackle without some research. <laughs> I think I I think I'm gonna need to look into this actually, because um, I do not know how to do this stuff. I have no idea what I am doing with this, and it's gonna get pretty messy if I uh, if I try to do this on air. So, um, so we might actually we might actually end a little early tonight. Um, what with the fact that I really can't, I really don't know how to work with post effects right now. <laughs> I need to look into it. Um, but we got we got everything that we wanted to for the um, ASCII transition mini games, or at the very least the planes to woods mini games. Um, it's it's actually fading out and fading uh, in audio. It's uh, turning off and on audio listeners. Although actually I do need to really quickly redo that in the text quest. Airplanes to Woods minigame, and then we gotta wait for this to happen. Um, we have the minigame end cutscene playing. Well, cutscene, I say that, but it's more like an animation. Um, and, you know, just a whole bunch of miscellaneous things to make that, that whole scene feel nice. Oh, and then we fixed that wonderful, uh, weird bug. Well, not bug, but unexpected behavior with uh, coming back from the woods, making your camera frustrum really short. Um, so it's nice that we discovered that, and... Uh, I was able to figure out what it was because that honestly freaked me out when I saw that. I'm like, oh no, what's wrong? Um, yeah, I mean, from what I saw with that, uh, Garrett, if you noticed, I had TA, uh, TAA on really briefly. Um, so this is what it looks like with no anti-aliasing and then with temporal. It's not much better. But of course, this is also not in motion, so who knows, it could be, it could be better in motion. 
Um, but before I forget, I do want to come over here, and uh, on end minigame, we are of course going to want to say um, audio I'm sorry, listener. Are you kidding me? Where are you? Do I make you private? I did. Okay, so protected. I guess I should. Yeah, that that would be why. So I'm going to say listener dot enabled equals false. Very simple. Okay. So. Oh uh, yeah, it's probably true. It's probably a little too compressed for for you guys to really see it very well. Um. So yeah, uh, I think we're gonna call it a night there. I need to do a lot of research on this to make it uh, to make to understand it even. Um, so we'll see how that goes tonight. But all right, thanks for stopping by, Jelmega. We're signing off too. So as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.